Hi everyone and welcome back to Hasat, a Turkish-ish table. I'm very excited to have you here. This is the third edition of 2024. I'm trying to get out two publications a month and so this will be the third of the year but the first of February. But before we get into all that, I just want to take a sip and then we can continue on. So I want to talk a little bit about yogurt. And you will see that in the title of this publication, but um, this is a really complicated topic and I think there's a lot that yogurt, especially in America, can reveal about deeper issues, especially related to politics, race, all kinds of things. And I just want to touch on one aspect of it. So after living in Turkey for almost seven years and then coming back into America, the yogurt culture was really odd to me. I didn't understand why when I went to the market, the supermarket, all I would see was countries identified for different yogurt brands. You had Bulgarian yogurt, you had Icelandic yogurt, you had Australian yogurt, um, and then obviously Greek yogurt. And um, I didn't really find that to be very helpful. For example, if I was gonna make a recipe, it really didn't give me much information as to why I would pick this yogurt over another and how this would benefit me in the recipe that I'm trying to create at home. And it really did get me thinking a little bit because in Turkey, there's never a national identity that's attached to a certain type of yogurt. There's a lot of different styles of yogurt. You have like more thin, you have, you have strained, and then you have um, really strained where it's kind of like labne. Um, and they're just more, the brands are, they're usually communicating how long the yogurt has been fermented, the type of milk that they're using, um, and whether it's strained or not. And those are the most important factors to me, um, which isn't really something I'm always understanding in America. And so um, in general, I understand that this has a lot to do with marketing. We know that there's a lot of dollars that go into marketing these brands. And um, therefore, sometimes different countries have more brand appeal than others, which I think has a lot of um, deeply rooted political issues that um, you know, I'm gonna explore in the article that you'll see below. So I'm um, really excited for you to read that. I'm really excited to get your thoughts. Maybe this is a topic that you've never really given much thought to. Maybe this is something you're really passionate about. Maybe you disagree with something I've said in the topic. I really would love to know because this is something that I think a lot about, um, especially coming from Turkey, where there is a very, very rich yogurt culture and um, not really understanding what's going on in America, to be honest. Um, I do think that it's fair to say that um, certain countries sell more products and um, and that's unfortunate in a lot of ways but I understand it I, we can't be naive to that but um, I still think that there's nuance to this topic that should be explored and we should push back a little bit on just that nationalistic branding that reduces um, a product to something that doesn't even really make sense at the time and I do want to give you an example of this um, in a pretty famous cookbook that came out in the past couple of years by a pretty well-known chef and recipe developer and cookbook author, um, she wrote a recipe for Chilber. And um, Chilber is a really delicious yogurt, thick strain yogurt dish from Turkey. It's thick strain yogurt with garlic and olive oil and then you poach eggs on top and then you do like a brown butter sauce on top. This is getting really popular on TikTok. You might've even seen it. And there's a recipe for that in this cookbook, which I totally understand has to be contextualized to an American audience. I think that makes sense. So I'm not gonna tell you who the author is because I'm not trying to take anyone down. I, I just wanna explore some of the complexities that surround this topic. And so um, she titles the, cook, the name of the recipe, Jammy Eggs with Yogurt and Brown Buttered Nuts. I think that's fine. I think that makes a lot of sense. You wanna give your audience a picture of what recipe they might want to try, contextualize, and that makes sense. Okay, great. However, in the head note of the recipe, um, which for those of you who don't know, the head note is the prose that exists before the recipe begins. It's usually like a small paragraph that maybe gives context to why the recipe is interesting. Maybe there's a personal connection to it. Um, maybe there's um, some history that they want to explain to entice the reader to try out that recipe. So I do want to read to you the first sentence of this head note, and maybe you can pick out something um, pretty immediately, and then we'll discuss. So here we go. This recipe is an ode to one of my favorite breakfasts, chilber, a Turkish dish of poached eggs served over Greek yogurt and drowned with chili-flecked butter. I think this is a beautiful sentence. I think it's scrumptious. I think 
it's enticing, I love it. But I do want to call, recall that she just said, I'm making a Turkish dish and then I'm asking you to get Greek yogurt. And I totally get it. You know, in America, um, most of the, the yogurt that she's trying to get the reader to buy is called Greek yogurt. However, this sentence shows a little bit of um, lack, maybe lack of awareness about how controversial that topic or that sentence is. To make a Turkish dish and call for Greek yogurt dismisses the rich yogurt culture that exists in Turkey. That's also a really long ongoing feud between two nations that, um, that isn't recognized in a sentence that just sort of flippantly says, get Greek yogurt to make this Turkish dish. That happens a lot in, in food media. There's a lot of different food items that have the same level of controversial kind of, um, that have this kind of this tension and this controversial issue surrounding. So this isn't new, but it does show that maybe this is a little bit more bold than what the author understood when she was writing this. And um, I just think it's important to remember that every food item has the ability to tell stories and represent people and dismiss other stories and dismiss other people. And we should push back a little bit on um, how we go forward with talking about food. And I'm not even advocating to say that yogurt belongs to the Turkish nation because I don't even think it's that um, black and white. Um, but I also, even though I'm not advocating for that, I also don't think that all of Greece should take ownership for this. Um, ingredient as well and I think there's something that is wrong with that um, because specifically in Central Asia, mid the Middle East, Balkan region, Eastern Europe, all these countries use this ingredient and it's a big part of their food culture and so um, how could we possibly just make that belong to one country. So anyway, just some food for thought. I think um, there's a lot of foods that do this but I really recommend that you push back on reductionary titles that make food just, you know, belonging to one people group or, or one nation. Um, let's be honest, modern day nations only came around in the last 100 or 150 years ago, but these ingredients have been around for thousands of years. So we have to keep that in perspective. So anyway, uh, thanks for being here. I appreciate your, um, your just your being on this journey with me and, and staying up to date with things that I'm writing. And please let me know your thoughts below. This is my recipe for chilber, and I'm using um, one cup, one and a half cups of thick strained yogurt, and then I'm adding a little bit of water and kosher salt and olive oil to really make it a little bit thinner and silky. I'm microplaning in one large garlic clove. You could do two small, but it's all dependent on how much garlic you like to have in your recipes. Then I'm using about three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna melt that, and then I'm going to add in the chopped walnuts, and I really want that buttery aroma to turn into a nutty flavor. Um, and then I'm adding in the pulpy bear. If you've never poached an egg, it's super simple. Create a vortex with the water, drop the egg in, and two to three minutes later, it's cooked and ready to go. Pull it out with a slotted spoon and you're ready. Um, I'm taking that garlic yogurt and making the base, and then I'm putting those poached eggs on top, spooning over the butter and walnut mixture. And then I am gonna garnish with a little bit more pulpy bear and dried dill, because I'm crazy about dill. These eggs are perfect and they just kind of melt into the yogurt and make a delicious kind of dipping sauce that is just perfect for a really big crunchy piece of toasted bread. Um, we love this recipe. Enjoy. Enjoy.